Hey David, uh, for people that don't know, what is your kind of your come up story? I know you're local, but just give us a quick background and then we'll, you can tell us about what you're here today for. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your background real quick. Cool. Well, then, yeah, it'll make sense why I'm wearing this jersey here in a minute. <laughs> more than every day. <laughs> I know, it's kind of nice. nice. Blocks of sun. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me, Todd. Appreciate yeah. hanging out with you for a minute. Um, so, I was born in Texas. Grew up in Texas, uh, graduated high school in Northeast Texas. And my dad was a banker in downtown Dallas before, and then a banker yeah. in Paris, Texas. Yeah. And uh, when I graduated high school, he actually came to work for American Bank here in Waco, yeah. Texas. Well, so, what is it? Uh, yeah, my dad, Dave, Dave Ridley Jr., I'm the third. Uh, yeah, I know we're talking about him. Well, your dad <laughs> was. Uh, <laughs> So after high school, uh, got an opportunity in Houston, went to a model search uh, with the girl I was dating at the time, and uh, got an opportunity that came across my path. She was, she was doing for model search, and you were just like she, along for the ride. I kind of went along for the ride. Yeah. She was thinking about doing acting and yeah. modeling, and I entered it. And, uh, some of the people there were like, man, have you thought about doing this? So I ended up taking some pictures with some photographers, yeah. and they sent them around to New York and Dallas. And, I uh, got a few calls where people were like, man, you know you can travel and model. And I was like, I don't know if I want to do that. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. So uh, I dove into it. Flew out to New York. And How old were you? I was uh, 20. Yeah, I went one year, two years junior college. Uh, and then uh, flew out to New York and got some opportunities that just kind of came across Signed my an agency? Or got got an agency, but first the photographer said, hey, I want to shoot you for Loma Vogue and Italian Vogue with this Kate Moss. And I was like, who's Kate Moss? And come to find out, she was a supermodel. I knew nothing about it. Mm -hmm. And that photographer ended up shooting me for Abercrombie and quite a few other things, Ralph Lauren, and started traveling the world and lived in New York for, for almost six years. That is so kin to my story. <laughs> you, did you know I had all, so many opportunities to do the same thing? Yeah, I've, I didn't have we've turned them down. Yeah. Well, yeah, thankful. Well, that had you to know. be kind of a weird experience. Though. That's just a it was crazy. Doing this and what am I doing? Really cool traveling the world. Thanks for not is doing that, it. Is that the best part? Well, yeah, best that part? was the best Keeping part. Keeping the or the yeah. traveling? So yeah, traveling and seeing the world was really the best part. You know, I just want to thank you again for not doing it. Less competition yeah, for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, so appreciate you. Yeah. So, yeah, seeing the world was amazing. Uh, uh, you know, but what happened was, is I started getting in environments where there were things that were offered, uh, alcohol. Some people do things. Yeah, and everybody's doing it. So I started kind of down the road of drinking and, uh, some, you know, uh, worldly things that I thought would make me happy and living in New York and traveling and, uh, came to find out that really none of that made me happy and really hit a low yeah. low spot in life. Had loving family here in Texas that always welcomed me in and said, hey, if you ever want to move back, we're here for you. We'll help you out. And a sister, mom and dad, and brother-in-law that loved me. And uh, got to a place in New York where I was at a low, low. And uh, thought I had thoughts of taking my life. And really? drugs and alcohol were there. And I was experimenting and just was like, Lord, if you are real, uh, I got to get out of this because I don't want to live yeah. anymore. Yeah. So kind of it was a cry out to the Lord. And mm -hmm. that was in 2005. 2005, I, I got a one-way ticket, called my family, and moved yeah. back to Texas. Yeah. And when I moved back to Texas, um, you know, things didn't get better here. I had to kind of go on a journey and yeah. discover uh, my own personal relationship with the Lord. And that was the thing that really transformed my life. And uh, started working, walking in relationship with the Lord and met some great friends and turned my life around. It, it was, it's been an amazing journey. I always loved bass fish. I've been doing it since I was three. Yeah. And so I started fishing tournaments with my dad again on the weekends and really... Uh, enjoyed that and um, and then uh, moved to, to Waco. I lived in Dallas for a little while and that's where I went to church and went through a Celebrate Recovery program. So when I moved back to Waco uh, from Dallas, I worked for Channel 10 for a little while, yeah. uh, loved that job and then I got an opportunity to work for Blue Bond at Health Services, Home Health and Hospice. I was on the hospice side and loved it. And I had a, a house here in Waco that yeah, I you know, just Cut you off yeah. Here, sorry. The po I'm looking for the positives. Obviously sure. Going through pain is, is sure. All those things. 
But the positives are, you can learn some lessons at a relatively young age, not at the same young, young at the time. That's right. That some people will figure, start figuring out when they're 40, 50, 60 years old. So, yeah. you know, you go through the process, you figure out what's important to you, what really matters. That's right. Man, that had to be helping you in that hospice care situation. Oh, oh Lord. totally. You had from your pain, come, yeah. you know, you're now able to, to minister to those folks. Yeah, right? you can sit and with families. people that are going through one of the most difficult things in their life. I and love families. it. And families yeah. that were going through it. And hospice is an amazing you're service. So much more that. Yes. And uh, it's a great service, and I was able to sit there with them and, and know what it feels like to be hurting. Yeah. So that was great. Well, I had a smaller house, and I always wanted a bigger house to entertain. Yeah. Uh, found a bigger house, couldn't afford it, and I put that dream on the shelf. My mom and I had found that house together. We're driving around Waco, and about a year and a half later, I got a Facebook message that that house was going up for sale again. And the owner said, hey, we would love to sell it to you if it's the right timing now. And I was like, I want a bigger home. So I called my friends that worked at Magnolia, uh, went over there and looked at it with them, and they said, oh, David, season three has one spot left. You ought to apply for it. And I'm like, I don't want to be on TV. You know, I did modeling. and all those like most eligible back <laughs> Oh, that's I, right. I, I forgot about that. That's right. One of the houses you looked at that you didn't buy, and yes. that roof, mid yes. Central modern, that had, had a little bit of a light because yeah. it up. I bought the house and remodeled it. I said, I need yeah, your wife to told it. me about that. Uh, you need to, before you leave town uh, this next yeah. you need to run over there and walk through it. If you remember it, because it's completely different. Oh, I got to see it. Yeah. So Magnolia was worried. They thought I was going to pick that house or another one because they show you different houses on the episode. So I picked the bachelor pad, the peach house, and man, it was a great experience. Never thought I'd be on TV. You know, I was hungry. I did. And the, but the Lord wanted to show me that now where I was at in life, yeah. that uh, I could I could be back on TV and handle it. Yeah. And it was a great experience. And tell me the truth. Did you get some crazy contacts? There's some nuts oh, out man. there. Well, when, you come, when you get any level of fame, I bet you get all kinds of I crazy. shut off my social media yeah. for a little while. Uh, you got a lot of moms, grandmas, and friends that want to set you up on blind dates. Yeah, they mean well. That's right. <laughs> so in that house, after I moved in, after being on the TV show, I had this thought and, and kind of impression of a tour company in Waco because I thought before I was going to tour around the world and share my story yeah. well then I got this thought well a tour company in Waco yeah. and uh, you know at first we thought we'd do a, a tour of the you know fixer upper stuff in yeah. Waco well then those doors closed and called my friend Luke and Rachel White who I started Waco Tours with uh, and in said, hey, what do you guys think about this? And they were like, David, that's a great idea. We've been thinking similar. And uh, so we started the company uh, together, and the company's five years old now, where now it is a tour of a little bit all of Waco. The Restoration Story of Waco gives people something fun to do when they come to town. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got river cruises on the river, and we've got a van tour, a city tour. It's fun, it's entertaining, it's refreshing, it's the story of the city. It's not just about the TV show, it's yeah. of all of Waco. We just got on TripAdvisor. We have over 4,000 excellent reviews. We got number four van tour in America. Wow. Like, yeah, it's it's our it's our guides and our people that work for oh, us. So is that really a story about the talent? I mean, you yeah. have to have a story. That's about yeah. the talent, right? Yeah. Has that been a struggle getting people to, can, to do that? It is, but man, we've had people that uh, we do a guide and a driver. So ours is unique, yeah. where we had people that would have never thought they were going to do tours, do it on the yeah. side for us. People that work full-time jobs and wake up. The best ones are kind of ones that almost would do it for free. Yeah. <laughs> there are people you, that did you, it. You get that sense. I mean, I've done most of them. Like Chris Walnick worked for us. Yeah. And he didn't care. He just wanted to do it for fun. <laughs> so that has been a fun journey. Speaking of starting Waco yeah, Tours, yeah. thanks to Alliance Bank, I yeah. didn't know anything about getting a business yeah. account. You guys yeah. really helped us out. So thanks yeah. so much for that. Yeah. And uh, we appreciate everything. Yeah. So, did the tour company, uh, then we went through COVID, and during the COVID shutdown of our tour company, going long walks with my wife, and always had these thoughts of bass fishing, and, and she really said, David, you just seem to talk about bass fishing more than yeah. just as a hobby. Yeah. So, I really started processing and kind of thinking, wait, is there more to the fishing industry that I had to explore? So I started praying about it, journaling, kind of thinking through it, talking to mentors and people, 
And that's when I had the thought of, man, should I explore the fishing industry more? So started calling people like Alton Jones, who's a professional bass fisherman who lives here in Waco, and his son Alton and different people. And uh, they were all like, man, you should explore the fishing industry. Maybe it could be a good fit. And then General Tires, this company was in town. Oh, those ones that you're in the head with? Man, those are pretty funny. I'm on the General Tires fishing they're, they're team. Pretty, those are comical ads. It's, oh, it's uh, funny. Reminds me of the early ESPN ads. Yeah. Kind of the thing, you know, with the camaraderie the between the jokes, it, inside it, jokes. It's fun. Yeah, so they put me on their TV commercial yeah. as the new guy, as a model, which was kind of embarrassing, but totally it was fun. fun, and we had a great time. So the doors just opened in Daiwa and, you know, people yeah, so in town. Else on there, what's a piece of Rob Fuentes, yeah. Alliance is on here, Ship Belting. I've got a lot of Waco companies on here that have uh, supported me. And so now I'm pursuing this dream of bass fishing. And, um, you know, through that, after five years at Waco Tours, I really felt like the next chapter was for me to take a leap of faith and uh, move to a more centralized location yeah. that I could explore bass fishing even to the next level. Well, it so happens to be where my wife is from. Is She's from Alabama. Yeah. And uh, so my wife and I are going to move and transition to the Birmingham, Alabama area. Yeah. Uh, Alabama is where a lot of bass fishing happens. And I'm going to be able to travel from there and uh Really looking you're, forward you're to it. Business I, yeah, Waco yeah. Tours, I'll, I'll still own half of it, and we'll do Zoom calls once a week. Thankfully to Zoom and all the other video opportunities, I'll be really involved with that. I just won't be working in the day-to-day. -day. Yeah. So I'm going to pursue this dream and kind of take the next step of faith and see what the Lord does. And, That's interesting. Yeah. I just came from a Chamber of Commerce yeah. strategic session, and one of the workforce issues, uh, threats you know, that they're trying, that the workforce is trying to address is, there's been so many people through COVID that are just changing ideas about their job and career. And they're like, I want to pursue what, you know, my dream or whatever it is. Yeah. It's in my work. And it's it's great. Yeah. Or I'm going home and I'm going to right. raise my kids. Or I'm going to cut my budget back yeah. and those kind of things, which are great. It's a little bit of a challenge from a workforce perspective. But, I mean, you're putting yourself in a position to where work is a play. I mean, it's work, but it's not going to feel like work. Yeah. You're, you're, you're turning your, your hobby into your, your passion into yeah. your career. It's, it's something that's been deep in there since I was three. I've been yeah. casting and fishing, and I just love it. And I've loved Waco Tours. It has been an amazing uh, business. I've learned a lot, and I think it's only going to help me even with my next venture, which is fishing. And yeah. Um, yeah, I'm super excited about the next chapter, especially for my wife and I and uh, our family and uh, her and I and our little girl. We got another little girl coming in November. So, and I'm still going to keep some Waco sponsors yeah. because I'm going to be, you know, I'm on social media and yeah. uh, I'm going to keep my accounts here Visual, at Alliance. Visuals are spread in. If you're okay with don't that. Let him, don't let them go. No, we're not going to let them go. It's kind of, this may embarrass you yeah. saying this, but to me, the really doing a good job of developing your own personal brand. Thank you. Know? you. And brand reputation, people like that word better. And it looks like to me that you're now putting that over on the fishing side, which is, you know, the entertainment industry. Well, I mean, it's yeah. fishing, but it's entertainment industry. If you watch your videos and whatnot, you can tell that. And you still got to wait for tours, and it may end up being on something else. You know, yeah. it's just an exciting Appreciate scene. that. Yeah, it's fun to watch. Yeah. It's been fun. I'm, I'm excited about this next chapter of life. And yeah. Seeing where How can getting. people follow your story, of, especially the fishing story? What's the best way to keep track of it? Um, I see you post a lot. You know? I tried watching this one. winter, and I was like, I fished a little bit once, but you're like, if some of the winter, winter to, uh, tournaments are, dude, you were like in parkas. People, and, people think like, you're just going out fishing, having fun. Like yeah, yeah it's, I love this. it's cold, rain, long days. It is a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, but when you love something, like you said, it doesn't feel like work sometimes, but it is, it is hard. Uh, so I'm on Instagram, Instagram. Uh, at Facebook. I'm on Facebook and Instagram at David Ridley Free, uh, and I fish the MLF Big Five circuit, the Toyota. It's the semi pro circuit, yeah. and uh, I'm going to be fishing the Central and the Southern next year, and some maybe at the North. I'm headed to New York in two weeks wow. uh, to fish an event. So, yeah, I'm excited. It's, it's a lot fun. fun. So our producer here, Clarence, oh, really makes me nervous. 
He's got this. I've never seen these questions. I hope we don't have to edit them out. I don't know what. He's like, you got to ask these oh, five goodness. questions. We're about to get embarrassed. Rapid right? fire. Let's go fast. Okay. I don't know what they are. Uh, oh, my gosh. Let's get that one. Now, I'm just going to go in the, in the order that they came in. Oh, right. What's the worst thing you ever put in your mouth? Those jelly beans that taste like poop, like the kids, those, you know, those trick jelly beans? I was thinking related to fishing, but that works. It's not okay. like, it's <laughs> a nasty uh, did you Do you have a childhood nickname? Yes, a bunch, actually. Can you reveal it? Public. It's not it's bad. Public. Yeah, it's it was Max. I wore Air Max Nike shoes Max. my entire life. Yeah. How did they stick? Yeah. Although my, my wife, I think she dated I mean, Max. I thought I'd call you. <laughs> okay. What do you wish you had known? Ten, what do you wish you had known ten years ago? It's kind of heavy. Wow, ten years ago. Mm. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Number four. <laughs> He's, he's moving. So, so many areas of life over here. Uh, you want me to answer it? Yeah. Oh, goodness. Ten years, uh, ten years ago. Ten years well. Uh, I, I wish I uh, would have uh, <laughs> met my wife, honestly. She would have managed my money a lot better. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Kept you out of yeah, I wish I would have known her ten years ago. Which we won't talk about here. Yeah. It's a family show. Would you rather find 100... Can you read this stuff? Where do you come up with this? Where would you rather fight one hundred duck-sized horses or one horse horse-sized duck? <laughs> would you rather fight one hundred duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? <laughs> That's easy. That's easy. Uh, well, yeah, I'll, I'll fight hundred. Why not? A hundred duck-sized. You're gonna horses. do one. Just duck-sized yeah. horses. Yeah. A hundred. That seems. I think you have better chance with a. Okay, last one. Thankful. If you could choose a song to play every time you walked into a room, what song would you choose? Here's a good. Like if you're going up for the bat or something, like you go up to the. What would Man, be I gotta tell you, I know it's played a lot, but I the Tiger's one of my. Ah, uh, just in your head. I fishing? ran out to it. The basketball, yeah, fishing. fishing. All right. Yeah. I the Tiger. Yeah. You know, you just, hey, feel free to use that on your show. That's right. You grab them. I the Tiger. Right, we're not letting it go. The liquor's not letting go. You're out here hours. So. Yeah, well, I'll be around coming back here, you know, uh, coming back and forth, family and businesses. Well, when you come back and sit down and you tell us how it's going in, in Alabama. Sure. So I'd love to update you guys. Thanks for having me. Football stinks out there. Yeah. My wife went to Alabama, uh, so I might be in Alabama soon. Thanks, Daddy. Appreciate Thank you. Appreciate right. you, Todd. That was fun. All right.